Let's bring in uh, Leroy Chow right now. He's a former astronaut to talk about some of this. You know, Leroy, I got to ask you, 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 you spent your whole life training for a moment like this. It is so hard to become an astronaut. And now four civilians are going to get to go into space. Where's your mind tonight? Oh, I think this is great. This is a natural evolution of uh, human spaceflight. Of course, in the beginning, as you said, uh, you know, it was a very specific, you know, military pilots that uh, with specific qualifications could apply and be selected <clears throat> and get to go fly these missions. Later on in the shuttle era, it opened up to uh, engineers and scientists like me. And so I was very fortunate in my career at NASA, my 15 year career to get to fly four times. And, and I know the excitement leading up to your very first launch and so uh, very, very excited about commercial space. And now this landmark, this uh, uh, this milestone of launching the first amateur crew, if you will, into space aboard a fully automated vehicle. You know, Leroy, I, I got to talk to you. We, we are we're all excited tonight. Right. We are talking about hope. We're talking about the future. We're talking about the amazing stories of all these crew members. But there is also that sort of question in the back of our head. You know, what if something goes wrong and we're all going to we're all going to hold our breath as that as that ship just takes off into space. How dangerous are these launches? Well, sure. There's going to be risk anytime you're involving rockets and spacecraft and you're flying into uh, into orbit. You know, you've got to put a lot of energy into the vehicle to get it up to that orbital speed of around 17,000. 500 miles an hour. Once you get up into orbit, you know, your your uh, risk level goes down a little bit. But then when you come back down, you've got to take all that energy out and that gets dissipated into a heat shield. And so, uh, you know, it's just as dangerous coming down. So uh, not without risk, but we manage the risk the best we can. We learn from accidents that have happened in the past. We do the best we can to design systems to be redundant. And so in this case, you know, we don't have the backup, the manual backup, if you will, of manually flying the vehicle with a professional at the controls. However, uh, SpaceX has got their arms around it very well, I think. And so I have high, very high confidence this, this mission will be successful, but there's always going to be risk. Leroy, what, what does the space community think of Elon Musk? He has definitely put his touch on these rockets, on these space missions. He's also been very successful and it's taken a lot of time and a lot of money and a lot of guts. Uh, but things are a little different. If you will, if I can, NASA was possibly, you could say, a little buttoned up. Uh, they had to be, right? You're dealing with lives and you're trying to get to space. And here comes Elon Musk, and he's a bit of a cowboy, if you will. How, how is he being perceived, and, and are, are people happy with the, sort of the Elon Musk era in space travel? Well, you're right. I think in the beginning, people were wondering, people in the aerospace business were wondering, well, who is this guy? He did software. He did a, uh, this thing called PayPal. And now he thinks he's going to come and, and reinvent, um, you know, rockets and, and spacecraft. And But he's he's done that. I mean, he has made good on his on his promises. It took a little longer than he initially thought, but he's recovering successfully on a regular basis. First stage boosters, refurbishing them and relaunching them, dramatically bringing down the cost of launching satellites and spacecraft like the Dragon into orbit. Uh, he's been catching payload fairings. He's going to start reusing those two and also bring further bringing costs down and Starship. I mean, he's only been working on Starship for a few years. And of course, he's blown up several because that's what happens in a new development program when you're really pushing hard. And so they learn from every one of those mishaps. And now he's getting ready to launch the first Starship into orbit. It's really pretty fantastic. No, it, it really is, Leroy. And I'm going to ask our, our director, Brett, if he can punch up that, that image you just had, because it had the T-minus clock. And I think we're about T-minus six minutes before we launch. And we had a, a, a view inside uh, the Dragon space capsule. And again, you know, we're, we are sort of at the mercy of SpaceX and NASA during this broadcast. But you can see it right there, T-minus five minutes and 33 seconds. 